Recently you showed interest in doing a Bitwig only project. I do have 5302 playlist now up on Apple Music. What's your signature dish? Do you ever write not in the 44 time signature? How do you balance work and family life? Did you try the brand new serum upgrades? What are your thoughts on using pink noise for static mixes? Hey guys, welcome to the Kane Audio vlog. It is Friday. It's time for another Ask Me Anything. Usual rules apply. Comment anything you want below this video and I'll get back to you in next week's video. Before I look at last week's video, any house admin? Yes, there is. Uh, first of all, apologies for the crazy suntan and t-shirt marks. Uh, I have been out in the sun all week trying to build a new garden studio. My body is aching from top to bottom. Every single muscle has been used. Uh, I am not used to that as a music producer that sits at a desk staring at a screen every day. Um, so in that house advent, I would say the new studio is probably a couple of weeks away uh i've done most of the landscaping to get everything level i have built most of the structure uh, i am now racing against time this morning so apologies if any of this feels really rushed uh it's now 7 30 in the morning and I have until about 11 a.m. where the winds are supposed to pick up. Uh, I have got panels on the roof and I need to just secure everything down to make it weatherproof. So uh, there we go. Uh, aside from that, I don't think there's anything else to update. The playlist hasn't been updated yet, but it will be shortly uh 5302 recordings nothing new happened or not quite yet so i'll talk more about that next week i think i'm putting in some orders for some stuff um yeah i think that's that for now so let's crack on uh starting at the top daily patcher i will say i'm quite happy as a logic user who quickly abandoned software for bitwig once it came out like you logic never sat right with me but this with this latest update they do seem uh, they do all the stuff I was thinking of getting an Ableton license to use, capture MIDI and sampling capabilities primarily. So I think with Bitwig and Logic, I'm quite ha a happy camper now. I think the step sequencer and how Logic has stolen the idea from Bitwig of integrating the launcher from the arranger will actually push it ahead of Ableton for a lot of people, not to mention uh, the built-in devices are outstanding. That's true, their built-in devices are great. Um, recently you showed interest in doing a Bitwig only project. I'd just like to plus one that uh, as I like to challenge myself with that, uh, I, I actually am happy with the results. Uh, sorry, that as I like to challenge myself with just that and I actually am happy with the results, though I'm not nearly at your level. I'd love to hear what you can do with Bitwig devices. Uh, I think they have slowly been increasing the capabilities update by update. And by now it's astonishing what you can do with this uh, and the built-in devices. Yeah, it's one of those things I think Bitwig, when it first launched, I wouldn't say it was just any other door, but it was, it, it, it wasn't necessarily offering a huge amount of things that were putting it ahead of others. I guess that's fair. Um, Whereas if you look at it now, if they launched with what it's capable of now, which would have been impossible because you can't you can't foresee what people need and want. So you can't launch with all of that. But had they done that, then, you know, it would have just blown everything else out of the water. Uh, if you do not have time for the grid, do not touch it. Uh, you may get sucked in for far longer than expected. Yeah, I mean, this is why I've, I've always said, you know, uh, that modular synths are, are, are like crack, basically. Um, and I stand by that. And, and the grid is quite a lot like that as well. 
Um, however, I used to use a lot of Max MSP stuff and all of those, so I think I think I'm all right with the grid. Um, but I just don't find the music I've been writing for the last five six years has not really needed much experimental stuff to happen and I think that's again one of the many 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 reasons for me launching 5302 is I hope that any artist that releases through 5302 is given an opportunity to actually just go what do I want what do I want to make what do I want to do um, and how do I want to do it and I think that's quite important is the process of just experimenting and seeing what works and what doesn't and I think that's quite important um, not that it's an experimental label and I would never claim it to be experimental because I don't want it to be experimental music but I want there to be some experimental sounds in there uh, no question comes to mind at the moment I do have 5302 playlist now up on Apple Music as both the ongoing weekly one, uh, 5302 Electronica, and I will start retaining a historical playlist as well, 5302 Electronica Historical, for those interested. Uh, I have been playing out that playlist a ton lately. Uh, so yeah, anyone interested, I guess comment on last week's video to Daily Patcher, um, uh, unless it's searchable, I guess, I don't know. Uh, Jaku Music, uh, great AMA as usual, together, high five. Uh, the term signature sound gets passed around a lot, uh, but what I want to know is what's your signature dish, food? Hmm, signature dish. I'm, I'm gonna have to say it's probably spaghetti bolognese. I know that's a bit boring or a bit unsurprising. Um, but I think it's that one dish that I have cooked pretty much week in, week out since, I don't know, since I was 16 probably. Um, and yeah, I think over the years I've sort of slowly improved my recipe to my taste. So for me, that's my signature dish. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that. Uh, music related question. Do you ever write not in the 4-4 time signature? Uh, I've been listening to a genre called math rock recently and the bands will use 11-8 and 9-8. Oh, I've heard of math rock and I don't like it, but then I don't like much rock at all, if any. Um, okay, no, prog rock I like, but yeah, math rock I don't like. And funnily enough, I think prog rock is probably the closest thing to math rock. Um, uh obvious example being uh pink floyd money was f five four it might have even been five six but i think it's five four uh yeah so do i ever write in other time signatures i have done i have written in three four i think that's fairly common i've written a track in five four there's only one that i can remember and i don't know if I ever actually released it or not. I'm not sure. Um, I've done switches of time signatures as well, and I think that's that's probably more common than we think in electronic dance music, where you might shorten the breakdown by half a bar or something like that. And which is, I mean, technically you, you you're switching time signature, but if you're not just halving it, if you're just shaving one beat off or something like that, then you, you're technically switching the signature for a bar, but it's it's not it's not what you're asking really. Uh, thanks, Jack. You're welcome. Uh, Bill Carroll, thanks for the Friday AMA. Definitely helps create a feeling of community and togetherness. High five. Uh, how do you balance work and family life? How does working from a home studio impact family life? Uh, I don't. <laughs> so, no, I do. Uh, I, I, I mean, there's never a perfect balance, I guess, is the real answer. Um, how do I balance work and family life? I honestly try to keep work related stuff down to Monday to Friday, nine to five. Now, the reality of that is probably nothing close. 
um, because I'll always be responding to messages or emails or something, you know, to pretty much to the moment I go to bed. Um, so I'm I'm not saying that I find I don't think I found that that perfect balance, but I have over time learnt that, you know, when someone emails you, you don't need to reply straight away. If you're busy doing something or if they message you or whatever, you don't have to respond straight away. And I think we as a culture have sort of learnt that if I can respond straight away or if they can respond straight away then they should respond straight away and we we live in a world where you know things like customer services are almost expected to be instant now um i don't know if that's right or wrong but that's just the world we live in now so i think the 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 work family balance can be a tricky one at times um because you know if 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 an important client sends me an important email I feel bad just leaving it half an hour or whatever if I'm eating my food or something. I feel like, oh, I really need to answer that email because I've I'm, I've got to be quick because they're important. And the reality is, is that client could have sent that email and gone, oh, I'm going to go have something to eat. And, and they're not expecting an instant response. So it's kind of a tricky one to get right. Uh, how does working from a home studio impact family life? Um, well, I think having a, a baby in the house impacts work more than anything. Um, before the baby arrived, the, there wasn't really much of an impact. I mean, I've never been someone that works loud or anything anyway, so I don't think, well, I say never. More recently, I don't tend to work loud. Um, for the last five, six, seven years, I just don't tend to turn the volume up too loud uh, unless I, I just fancy a, a listening session or whatever. Um, so it, I've never really impacted family life in that respect, working from home too much in that I'm not booming the house down or anything. Um, yeah, and I think uh, my family are aware that if I'm in this room working, then they tend to sort of just leave me to it as much as they can. So I, I tend to only get bothered if I'm really needed for something. Obviously, having a baby in the house, I'm needed more often. Um, but that's life. Um, and again, I don't think it's a big deal. I think, um, and I think any of my regular clients, they'll all be aware that I have a baby. So if I need to go, you know, um, you know, my, my baby's struggling to have a poo and I need to go and help out or whatever. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I think most people on this who, who regularly watch this channel will probably already realise that I'm the kind of guy that will just tell a client that I don't, you know, I don't beat around the bush necessarily. Um, so yeah, I, I find that I think finding that balance is quite tricky. Sometimes the, there will be weeks where I work too many hours and there'll also be weeks where maybe I don't put in enough hours and, and you've got to catch up the next week. Um, you know, and there are weeks like this week, for example, the last probably two weeks solid, you know, I've been, uh, the sun's just suddenly come out. Sorry if the uh, lighting's all changed. Um, yeah, the last couple of weeks, you know, I've been landscaping pretty much from the moment I wake up. And my girlfriend, bless her, has been helping me more than I could ever admit. Um, and, you know, we've been out there from pretty much the moment we wake up to tea time um, in the evening. And, you know, same as last night, it was dark when I finished building because I needed to try and beat the clock. Uh, which is why my body today is aching so much. Uh, on the, on a side note to that, uh, feel free to everyone have a guess. So the 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 cabin basically it's a log cabin I'm building in the garden uh, is four by three meters ish. Um, feel free to have a guess at how much gravel you need to uh, to put that down. Uh, I used a calculator, like a, a gravel calculator on the internet uh, just before I started building 
thinking, right, okay. And I think it came out with 12 bags, you know, major 25 kilo bags. So I thought, okay, well, I can probably just squeeze that in the car. So I'll pop down somewhere and grab 12 bags of gravel. And uh, yeah, that wasn't anywhere near enough. And I think I've done about eight trips of getting 12 bags. Um, so yeah, anyway, there we go. So that means I've been carrying, I think it works out about 1.8 tonnes of gravel I've been carrying over the last week. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm aching. So there we go, finding a balance between work and family life. It, it's a tricky one because it's kind of a grey area. There's, there's The lines are a bit blurred really. Um, but I think, you know, when I first got with my girlfriend, I was already doing what I do. So she's kind of had that from day one. She's known what to expect. So there's never been any surprises. And I think this is something I may have touched on before where I remember when my career first started taking off and... I made that transition of of going from work, you know, being employed to being self-employed. And I can remember whoever I was with at the time, I sort of felt like um, it was a difficult transition for them to to cope with. Um, so, because it's it's a big change. Whereas actually, when you sort of when you start that journey you've already got that everything's already laid out i think uh if any of that makes any sense i don't know uh fan fan 87 salut dom together high five is a good track from uh bang Alter and dj falcon uh, there we go uh my questions one did you try the brand new serum upgrades uh like grabbing the last note you played on serum and drop it into your door as a wav file and modulation points on LFO. Super amazing to make one shots, for example. That is amazing. I haven't heard of that, um, but now you mention it, that's an amazing feature. That should be on everything ever. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Uh, question two, being a Moog fan, what's uh, your opinion on the new sub harmonicon? Uh, Somebody sent me a link to it recently and I looked at it and went, that's going to be good. And I forgot to check out the videos. Um, so I don't really have an opinion, but I'll be honest, pretty much anything Moog do is just amazing. Uh, because it's not just about, and I think this is an important point to make with synthesizers, it's not just about the sound they make in a weird way. Um, you know, a lot of it is down to uh, the the tactile stuff, the the, the tangible, the, the how it feels. Um, and I know I've used this as an example before with my Sub Thirty Seven, when that first came out and I that arrived. You know, it's in this beautiful, uh, eco-friendly recycled box with eco-friendly recycled in, uh, pull-out poster type thing of the schematics and everything and, and just the way it's packaged and everything is just it's it's an experience um so yeah i i don't have an actual opinion on the sub harmonica uh in any real way though uh because i haven't heard it in action but ask me again next week and hopefully i've i'll have heard it in action Either that or I'll be crying because I'm still building a cabin. Uh, by the way, uh, for anyone interested in videos on that, I'll be doing a few videos on it at some point. I've kind of basically so far filmed a bunch of time lapses. Uh, you know, there, there's been times where the, I know the camera's probably run out of uh, space and I've just carried on because I need to get stuff done. So I, I, I don't, I'm not expecting any game-changing videos but I'm I'd like to put some together about why I chose what I chose and how I went about it so uh, from the perspective of a working from home music producer and I think that's the angle that doesn't exist at the minute because there's hundreds that you know you're on YouTube watching me right now you know look for uh, garden office or log cabin or music studio or any of those and there's hundreds of tutorials on step-by-step bits but I don't think there are any on uh, 
non-recording studios because I don't I don't need it to be completely soundproof. I'm not a drummer. I don't I'm I'm not bringing in rock bands. Um, so there's a lot of different choices I've made, and I'll go through those at some point in videos, uh, hopefully over the next couple of weeks. Uh, have a great weekend. Cheers. I hope you still have work as audio engineer and sound designer. I do, although I have taken a couple of weeks off to get this build done. Um, but yeah, I am still working at the minute. Thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a weird one though, because I know I'm in the second wave of... I know that my clients are on the edge of things right now, so I'm I'm very aware of that. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. I hope you guys are doing well too. Um, finally, Andrew Hollis, together, high five. Uh, what are your thoughts on using pink noise for static mixes? Uh, fad, faff, or useful technique? If so, how do you go about it? I've seen conflicting videos. One says dip your tracks just below the pink level, and others say just above. I've never used it as a technique. I did once read about it and I did once speak to a few other engineers about it. And to my understanding, it's a technique that can work, but it's not perfect because it's it forgets the subjectivity of music. And I think that's the issue. So I can't remember what the deal is, but basically you, you load up pink noise and you use that as your sort of, in layman's terms, you use it as a reference track. Um, so you, you'd listen to the, the, the bass of pink noise and you'd get your bass line to sit just under it. I think it's just under, um, and then you take away the pink noise and you're left with a perfect mix, supposedly. Um, but actually, I think what you're left with is a flat mix and a flat mix can be a good mix. But if your bass line is 25, 30, 35 hertz, then having that flat's probably not ideal. You, you might want to be shaving it off a bit. And to me, it's not really... It's too scientific, it's too rigid, it's too orthodox, um, and it doesn't allow for subjectivity. So, for example, with the bass line so low, um, you know, any monitor speakers would struggle to reproduce a frequency that low. So actually, as a mix engineer, you need to use your head and go, actually, I need to scoop a bit out there and, and and allow for space above or maybe use the harmonics of that bass line and and bring those out um so that it doesn't quite feel so low um yeah so it's a bit of a weird one um i think you know in black and white in in text it works but in reality i don't think you're getting the best mix so it's not something i would recommend to anyone ever um by all means it's worth a shot um if you're really, really struggling with your mixes and you, you, you're coming out with terrible mixes, then it's probably a good starting point. And then you can kind of just tweak a few bits here and there from that point. Um, so I, I wouldn't discount it completely, but it's just not something that ever enters my head. It's not, I'd, it's not something I've ever tried either. So, um, you know, hey, who am I? For all I know, it could be the best thing ever maybe I've just completely missed a trick but I feel like there are no real shortcuts to mix engineering and I think that's why people still treat it as this mysterious dark art the same as mastering you know it is a very subjective thing there's an exact science to it but you also need to use your head at the same time and because of that you know people are kind of they're always a bit a bit confused about the processes or what works and what doesn't work and and you just have to use your ears at times and you just have to trust on what you think works or what doesn't work um so i think you know while you can use an exact science on these things um there needs to be some subjectivity in there as well otherwise it, it otherwise everyone in the world would use the pink noise technique you know if that gave you a perfect mix then every magazine every tutorial every major producer would be turning around going just use the pink noise technique um and they don't say that so i kind of feel like well it it can't be that perfect 
so yeah there we go uh thank you much uh thank you very much even uh for everyone for, who's st painfully listened to me waffle today because i feel like um it's still early in the morning this is my first coffee of the day normally i'm filming these videos and i'm on my second or third coffee um so yeah i'm struggling to speak today uh and like i say i'm just knackered so if you've made it this far into the video you do genuinely deserve a medal because i don't even know what i've talked about today so to prove you've made it this far into the video i would comment the word um spotify because the video recommended here is my response to joe rogan's hundred million dollar deal with spotify uh, i didn't know he had a hundred million dollar deal with spotify but there we go uh yeah so comment the word spotify and i will see you this time next week cheers